Today we got the brand new Orbea Laufey to take a first look at. Oh, I'm excited for this. This is the Orbea Laufey HLTD, the top of the line one. It comes in at $29.99. Oh, that's a beautiful color. Okay, I'm excited for this. Beautiful with those yellow decals. Oh boy, we've got some firsts on here. I'm really excited. Okay, let's get this in the stand and get it built up. Here she is all built up and she looks absolutely beautiful. Took a couple notes that I wanna share about the build process. This was slightly more involved than most bikes, but less than some other bikes. So uh, I had to put the bars on. I had to install the saddle on the dropper. I had to install the dropper. The dropper did not come installed in the frame. I think that's a good thing that everyone should learn how to do anyway, but that might be complicated for new riders. Um, I had to reposition the bar on the stem. The rotation was off and it wasn't centered in the middle of the bar. I feel like the front brake cable is far too long. The hose probably three inches too long. It would have been nice if Orbea had shortened that to a nice tidy size. And the rear brake needs a bleed. Had valves and the rims came taped. So all I had to do was pull the tube out, pop my sealant in, they sealed up really nicely. I also like that it had width marks indicated on the bars so you could trim them down to your preferred size. This is version three, I believe, on the Laufey. I've had the past two. I really liked version one. Version two was okay. Version three looks pretty exciting. They've done a lot of small things and tweaked a lot of things. They didn't just change one geo number or add a UDH. They've rethought quite a few things. First thing you'll notice is the locker storage cabinet. This is the first hardtail we've ever had on the channel where you have internal frame storage. And on an aluminum bike, I think that's awesome. It makes a lot of sense. This isn't an overly massive down tube where you're gonna mistake it for an e-bike. It comes with two little bags in here. You One is neoprene, one is pretty typical tool bag, uh, snack bag. You could put tubes in here, CO2s, roll it up, stuff it in here, and you've got quite a bit of in-frame storage. And it's really easy to access. It feels rattle-free here on the bike. And I like the little lever. I think they did a really good job executing this. It's got cool shaping to it. It's kind of a hexagon shape, kind of an angular shape on here. It's got a protective film on the bottom, which is wonderful to see from the factory. Graphics look absolutely stunning. And they've got some interesting technology on here. In some ways, Orbea's website needs to be completely praised. And in some ways, it leaves a lot to be desired. The webpage for the Laufey talks about a lot of the technology that goes into it. Unfortunately, for some reason, Orbea hides their geo charts way in the back where you have to click order or customize or my O to start to see the geo charts. They really need to put that info right on the home page. And I just find navigating a little bit clunky. This isn't a web review, but a lot of people are gonna go to Orbea's website to learn more about this bike and they're gonna struggle through that process a little bit. The ad copy was also very hypey. Um, that's their job. That's an ad manager's job or marketing manager's job is to hype the bike and make it sound amazing so that when we read it, we say, yes, that's me. I need to buy that. Lately, I've been getting burned a bit when I repeat what's on the website as information and I present it here on the channel because it hasn't always been true. It wasn't Orbea that was doing that, but now I'm always a lot more hesitant to just duplicate what's online and repeat that back. They've done a really great job to explain the features of the frame on their website and what really sets it apart. So let's talk about that a little bit. What does set it apart? A lot of it mirrors what we've done on my signature bikes, the Binary Maniac and the Stanton Sedona. The seat post is shifted forward slightly of the bottom bracket and that allows them to run a completely internal dropper all the way in. That means you can have more dropper post insertion. There's no water bottle bolts here interrupting the, the dropper insertion. There's no window of a little cable coming out interrupting that. It goes all the way down to the bottom bracket shell and it's completely straight. Bravo Orbe, I love to see that. They've got this marketing term, steep and deep, which is kind of catchy, meaning their seat tube angles are steep and you can run deep insertion on them. And this is where it feels a little bit more like marketing than what we actually need at the moment. Now, a lot of people get confused about knowing what length dropper they can run. 
and they think that as long as they can fit a long tube in here, they can run a long dropper. And technically, yes, you could run a 300 mil dropper in here because it would fit in the tube, but your saddle would be up here and you wouldn't be able to reach the pedals. And we would benefit a lot more by lopping off this top 50 mil and getting 50 more mil of dropper than having a long tube that would fit a longer dropper. So is there insertion available? Yes, but the longer this tube is, the higher your saddle is, so the less dropper you can actually run. A lot of people really get confused about that when ordering droppers. They don't think about the distance from the saddle to the bottom of their pedal stroke. That's your max seat height. And so if you want a longer dropper, what you gotta do is lower this not lengthen it and claim that it's straighter with more insertion. So steep and deep, yes, you can have deep dropper insertion, but the seat tubes are so long that you're not gonna be able to run a super long dropper anyway, if you have shorter legs like me. This year, Orbea is making a big push at tuning flex characteristics of all their frames and the Laufey is no different. My criticism of the last Laufey was that it was overly stiff and it sounds like they're really concerned about this not being too stiff. So the down tube and bottom bracket and head tube area are nice and stiff, and it looks it with a lot of weld material up here, kind of this ovalized um, angular down tube. I'll bet that is quite stiff. And then they claim that they've tuned the top tube. Oh, that feels fairly thin. The top tube in the seat stays to flex a little bit more. I'm so thrilled that they're thinking about that. Many hardtail manufacturers, pay very little attention to flex, especially with aluminum bikes. I think we could go a lot farther in tuning aluminum bikes to flex and feel really great. Cable routing's fully internal in the front triangle. It then pops out here at the bottom of the down tube and goes back into the chainstay here, back out there, and then the brake stays external in the back. Now hardtails are extremely versatile. You can use them for all sorts of things. You can commute on them, you could ride your kids to school, you could go bikepacking on them, you could race XC, you could in enter an enduro race. And this tends to lean more towards the enduro-y, rowdy side of things. The ad copy tries to make this sound like this bike is wonderful at everything. This came in at 30.5 pounds as spec, which is about typical for something we'd see like this. I just think the website tries to overhype this a little too much and might set somewhat unrealistic expectations. But we'll see on the ride review, but I've never ridden a 64 and a half degree head angle bike with 440 chain stays that weighed 30 and a half pounds that felt like a Zippy XC bike. Still, hardtails are very, very adaptable. So yeah, fast rubber, lighter wheels, a little bit zippier ride could get you by for some XC races. It's still gonna be about eight pounds heavier than most of the XC race bikes there, but you could do it. But this just looks like an aggressive trail slash enduro bike. This is the Laufey HLTD, the top of the line Laufey that comes in $2,999. That's a really tough price point to hit under $3,000 with great parts that don't need upgrading. And it's got some great parts. This comes with a Fox Float 34, not the Rhythm 34. This is a better fork than a lot of other Foxes are coming on this price range. Kudos to them for that. A little bit lighter. It's got a 140 mil travel. I think a 34 is about right for this. We've got Shimano SLX shifter with XT derailleur. We've got Shimano four piston hydraulic disc brakes with 180 mil rotors front and rear. Race face AR30 rims on Shimano hubs. Pretty typical engagement. Doesn't look terrible, doesn't look amazing. It's got 170 mil cranks. That's one place I would love to see bike manufacturers going to 165s. A few are doing it, but not many, but still 170 is a lot better than 175 like we used to see. We've got BC components dropper, which reminds me a ton of an SDG Telus. And we got a BC components bar and the stem's unique. It's kind of arrow looking, kind of like a road stem and the stem spacers are a little bit uh, different. There's no internal routing here, thank goodness, through the headset. But yeah, it's just kind of a modern look. It kind of reminds me of how modern cars these days, when you open the hood, there's plastic hiding everything so that it looks sleek. Um, I have no problem with this. There's no downsides to this other than it's unique to this stem. So if you swap stems, you'll need different spacers, but that's no big deal anyway. We've also got Ergon touch points, Ergon grips and an Ergon saddle. That is great to see in a sub $3,000 bike. A lot of times those are kind of throwaway components that you end up upgrading later and 
not having to upgrade those is fantastic. I love the dissectors, especially in the two six size. I'm gonna give a massive kudos to the product manager of this bike. I think they've really thought of a ton of things that a lot of hardtail product managers are overlooking. I like them thinking about stiffness of the different areas of the frame. That's really refreshing. I like thinking about having storage on here. I love the part spec. A lot of companies could go a lot cheaper on bars, stem, saddle, grips, even brakes. They could sneak things by you that you wouldn't notice until you've had the bike for a year and you look at upgrading, but they didn't. They decided to spec it with really great parts. What parts would I change on this if this were my personal bike? Nothing on here screams change me right away. Maybe I'd love a little bit shorter cranks. That's, that's personally what I would love to see on a size medium. That's all. <laughs> like that's, that's my only complaint. Maybe a high engagement hub, but that's gonna add two or $300 to this and bump it out of a lot of people's price range. And I think it's just a beautiful frame. I think the graphics look super sharp. I like the shape of it. Personally, on the medium, I wish this seat tube was shorter. We could get rid of that gusset or just lower everything down an inch or so. We've got water bottle mounts here and a tool mount up here. Let's take a look at tire clearance real quick. This is 29 by 26. It's not gonna fit anything larger than that in the 29 realm, but let's see if it fits like a 27.5 by 3.0. This wasn't designed for this, but I know a lot of you guys are curious. If you enjoy these types of things where I like try different wheel sizes and weigh things and measure the geometry, at the very least, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. But if you benefit from this, consider contributing using one of the links below. Buy me a coffee or Patreon. Over on Patreon, I do custom bike advice. So if you wanna know, should I get this or the Trek Roscoe 9 or the Chameleon? Those are the types of conversations I have over on Patreon and I work one-on-one -on -one with you. Find out your needs, your budget, your trails, kind of what you're looking for in your next bike. And then I can line you up with the right bike for your riding style. I've now ridden and reviewed over a hundred modern hardtails more than anyone else on the planet. And I've got a great knowledge base to pull from. And uh, I have also ridden about 50 different full suspensions as well. So I, I consult on those as well if you're not just looking for a hardtail. This is a big ask. Nobody runs 3.0 except me anymore, it seems like. But I do love 3.0s. They're fun. It's kind of funky getting the axle in here. This does have a UDH, a universal derailleur hanger, so you could run transmission on this. Uh, we're rubbing. I think even a 2.8 is going to rub. You could fit a 27.5 by 2.6, but I wouldn't go any bigger than that. So... I think it's best to stick with this as a 29er. That's what it was designed for anyway. When you run these smaller tires, it lowers the BB, you get more pedal strikes. And if you're okay with that, no problem. But I think 29 by 26 is a really fun wheel size. Yeah, a little, little bit of a bummer that I have to re-bleed this rear brake, but it is what it is. If you buy from a shop, they'll get that all dialed from you. But if you buy direct from Orbea, yeah, I just feel like it could have been assembled just a little bit better compared to what I'm seeing with other brands right now. So like most Orbeas, this has a pretty long chain stay. They had the room. They could have pushed it up a good, I don't know, 10 or 20 mil to have a short tucked rear end. But maybe the designer on this wanted more of a stable ride and have your weight more centered between front and rear. Let's measure the Geo, see what it actually looks like, and then we'll take it on the, on the trail and see what it actually rides like. Actual chain stay, 440. Rear center, 438. Seat tube, 416. I don't know, it feels like I should be able to run a longer dropper than a 150 on here, but for some reason I can only fit a 150. Maybe it's the 170 mil cranks. Reach comes in at 450. That's a great reach for me. That's a very modern, normal reach size. All of this Geo is very modern. 1212 wheelbase, so a little bit longer wheelbase. We got a little bit longer rear end. Effective seat tube here, 78.3. I love seeing that. That's a steep seat tube. Bravo, Orbea. And then let's check the head tube angle measured at the fork. 64.8, 64.7. Great, right where it said it would be. We have a 63 mil bottom bracket drop. Should be nice and stable. Stack is 635. 
And then effective top tube, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. That looks like 585. I've found that Orbea's geo chart is very accurate on this. It's amazing how many of these bikes I measure that are nowhere near what the geo chart says. Orbea did a great job making their geo chart match the actual bike. So there she is, the brand new Orbea Laufey. I'm impressed. They've updated quite a few things from the previous generation. And according to what I read online, each of those sounds like a major improvement. I'm excited to take this thing on the trail and see what it rides like. What do you think? What's your favorite feature? What do you think was missing? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching everybody. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.